everyone, I'm Deanna and this is Jackie. Welcome to Glow in Peace. Um, today I am discussing a really sad, not so, well, it's sad, but it's a really hard topic for me to discuss. It's the story of or my cancer journey. And in this video, we're talking, we're gonna talk about how, or I'm gonna talk about how um, I found out I had cancer, my cancer, what it's been like, what I've learned, and why I talk to a cute little kangaroo. And we're gonna discuss all of that. Um, it's gonna be a long video because I'm still working through it to this day. I got diagnosed four years ago. Well, I'll explain, but I got diagnosed in 2016, so five, going on five years. So it's a long story. So I just asked to, for you guys to please be a little patient with me if I stumble or, you know, like fumble with my words um, or get choked up. So I have the tissues here just in case. Um, so I'm going to start. I had to write a lot of it down because I realized, I guess, trauma can either cause you to remember something to a T or completely forget about it. And there are a lot of things, events within four or five years that I forgot that even happened. So I had to go back and write them down. This is just going to be the story up from 2016 to 2017. I will write about my experience with cancer or I will make a video of, of my experience with cancer in college in a whole separate video because that's its own thing. So I just have my notes. Um, and I'm a little nervous because I've never shared this with anyone other than my family and friends. And I haven't even told all my family and friends and a few people here and there, but no one has truly ever, I've never even really shared the true extent of how this has impacted me not even to my parents. So I just figured it's time. I've been putting this off, so I'm gonna share with you guys now. Okay. So started back in um, February of 2016. I was a junior in high school. That's a really good high school. Um, I was doing well. I was doing really well in school. I was making the honor roll. I was dancing. I was starting to get my splits and becoming really flexible, something I've always wanted to, getting certain stunts. I was doing really well. I was acing things in school. I was putting in work. I was doing well. I was being such a good daughter, like always. And I was just, you know, doing well in my faith. I was reading the word more. I was just really progressing. And now that was my junior year, right? I'm applying, getting ready to start applying to colleges. And it was just such an exciting and fun time in my life and I for and I had not struggled but you know I hadn't always put in that highest level of work my work ethic was amazing so I was really happy and I was doing well in school so around like February 2016 I'm not sure I, I maybe it was like the last week in February or the second to last week in February it was on a Tuesday at my school and there was a notif uh, notification through the intercom saying that it was going to snow so we got sent home early and school I went to we could take the train home a lot of girls would take the train home um so I did I took the train home I live in um, Stratford so um, if you know where that is I took the train home from Milford to Stratford mom picked me I was fine doing well no issue my mom had picked me up from the train station came home and I did something that I typically don't do I took a nap I never took naps I, I take naps now I don't I never took a nap in high school I would come home do my straight up right away just eat a snack do my homework go to dance or go to church and then like go to shower, go to bed, that was it. And I would just do that, but I was feeling this pain in my side. And it was like this dull kind of pain in my lower left abdomen. I had been feeling that pain on and off 
since about December of November, December of 2015, but I just figured maybe it was cramps or maybe it was, you know, in my head or stress. I didn't think much of it, but it was, I did notice this, you know, this pain. So that's, I was, I was so fatigued and I felt this pain. So I told my mom and she said, you know what, if you're still feeling this way, I'll take you to the emergency room uh, next morning. And that's what happened around 8 a.m. or 7, really like 7.30 a.m. I, to 8, between 8, 7.30 and 8, I went to the emergency room with my mom. She took me and, you know, I'm not thinking that's really anything. Um, They did their tests, blood work. I had a, an ultrasound around, let's say like 9.30 and... You know they did it and they found that my liver was inflamed and they were going to prescribe me anti-inflammatory meds and that was the issue so I was like oh okay no problem then they did another ultrasound maybe a half hour later and they noticed okay that's not it but why don't we keep you here for testing so I got an IV and if you know me like my parents and my family I I'm pretty skinny you know I don't like IVs and I got one through my hand and I still have that scar to this day but um, I got an IV um, they were doing tests and the next time I had an ultrasound was about 5:30. we wait I just remember waiting in the emergency room with my mom just so tired and just wanting to go home it's about 530, let's go 4, 530. I have this ultrasound. And my mom, she's getting frustrated at this point. She's like, you know what? They're taking too long. I'm just gonna take you home. They need to hurry things up. And around 530, I finally have the ultrasound. And if you've ever had an ultrasound, you know that the ultrasound text will tell you what body parts are what. You ask, what's this? Your heart, what's this? Your liver, what's this? They'll tell you. And I asked, what's this? I don't know. It was, you know, I saw something. I'm like, what is it there? And the ultrasound text said, you know, your doctor will go over everything, over everything with you. So I was like, okay, like, I don't know why you couldn't just tell me, but no problem. So that that's what happened. Um, after the ultrasound, I had a CAT scan, again, waited forever just waiting, waiting, waiting forever. Had to drink this really disgusting CAT scan dye. Sometimes they give you clear, like a, like almost like a crystal light, and they give you this weird milk shake thing. It's disgusting. So I finally had the ultrasound, um, the CAT scan. Now this is a CAT scan. And I found out I was allergic to the contrast dye that they inject into you to see a clear image because as soon as they were giving the contrast dye, I threw up along the side of the CAT scan machine. So that's how I found out I was allergic to that. Um, it's 10, now it's 10.30. I am tired. We came to the hospital, what, between 7.30 and 8 a.m. We've been there practically all day. I am so tired. And I'm just like, you know what, who cares? I, about a year prior, I had dermoid to like tumors. They're benign uh, cysts on your ovaries. And there was, it was nothing, they just removed them. And that was it. So I, you know, I've had procedures before. I've had, you know, other things, you know, tonsillectomy and endos endoscopies. I've had stuff like that before. So I'm like, whatever, just tell, just give me whatever meds you want to give me so I can just go home. I'm really tired. So it's 10.30. And the doctor comes in to go over the test results. So he's like, I just want to let you know that we found something. And I'm looking at my mom. She's looking at me. My mom is looking at the doctor. And the doc and my mom says to the doctor, is it is it cancerous? And the doctor said, I, I don't know. And I started crying. I just wept. I was because usually when it's not, like they'll be like, no, but the fact that they didn't even know, I, 
you know, sometimes I can't believe this happened, but anyway, um, so they said they were going to transfer me to Spinal Cancer Center, which is part of Yale, New Haven Hospital, and I'd be in the pediatric wing because I was 16. This is February 2016. I was a junior in high school. I was 16 at the time. And uh, my mom went home. Before they transferred me, my mom went to go home to get my clothes, my PJs, and of course, Jackie. So... I was just sitting in the room how one day I was just at school with my friends talking about college going on technically going, we're going on college tours and, and the next day I'm in the hospital and they found something so took an ambulance we were, took an ambulance to uh, the hospital and they had the room big room decorated had my name and posters all over the nurses were really sweet. Again, there's real, really no rest in the hospital. Every, you know, every few hours, they're coming in, they're taking my blood, they're doing tests, they're, get, you know, whatever. They're doing their things. So, I call this the three days because uh, maybe this was a Tuesday. I was admitted about Wednesday, Wednesday, mor like Wednesday morning. By the time we got to the hospital, it was like 11.30, maybe 12, going on 12. And I called this the three days. It were pretty agonizing. Um, I, the first day, so that Wednesday morning, um, the doctors, it was just so overwhelming because I didn't know what was happening. A bunch of doctors are coming in. You see doctors, nurses, med students, uh, uh, physician's assistant everybody's just in the room or outside the room talking talking going what it could be this could it be that and I'm just I'm just like God what is happening to me and the first thing they wanted to do was a biopsy of the mass of the of, yeah, of the mass um, so they you know the biopsy was very scary for me not because the biopsy it was a it was just a, a needle biopsy it wasn't like they went in and had to like go in and resect a piece of the tumor it was just a needle biopsy but I'm the doctor I there was confusion on my end because when the doctor said we're going to sedate you sometimes it means that you're going to be awake but you won't feel anything and I wanted to be knocked out and that's what he meant I just wouldn't be under general anesthesia which means I won't be breathing on my own but um I would just be sed I'd be sedated I, I would be still be breathing on my own just knocked out and I cried I, I cried and the physician assistant was there and she was just like rubbing my hand and she was just giving me a hug and saying it's gonna be okay and I'm, I'm really beside myself, beside myself because yeah, I don't know what's happening to me. So I, they were, I finally, obviously I got the biopsy and after biopsy, you get this whole, if you have cancer or any a chronic illness or life-threatening illness, you know the drill. You come in, you get test after test after test. And that's what happened. I got an echocardiogram, making sure there was nothing wrong with my heart. I had um, a PET scan, cat, another CAT scan, another MRI. I had a brain. I had an MRI of the brain, and then I had a separate like chest MRI, and did all of that. Just tired. I remember I was waiting for one of my scans, and the doctor came in. One of the the surgeon who would potentially remove the mass if it needed to be removed. Um, we came in and just started talking to my mom. He's saying, okay, we're going to need an IV. We're going to possibly need a pick line. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what? And I'm crying again, still crying because ports, IV, like pick lines for if you need chemo. I, I, I just, I didn't know what I had. I didn't know if it was, the fact that they couldn't say for certainty that it was benign. Uh, to not know whether you're going to live or die is one of the most painful experiences I've ever felt in my entire life. 
And I was going through all of that times 10. So uh, let's fast forward. I'm still at the hospital. I was supposed to go on a college tour to UConn. And even though UConn wasn't one of my top schools, I actually go to UConn now, but um, I was supposed to go there and I was excited to go. And I asked one of the nurses, do you think I'd be able to get discharged early? I have a college tour on Thursday. And she was like, no, hon, I, I don't, or it was the Thursday and I was, it was on Friday. And she said, no, hon, I don't, I don't think, you know, you're gonna be able to go. And I, and I figured, and you know, one thing my mom was able to take care of school. So she, she was able to talk to my guidance counselor and the principal and they were able to collab with my teachers so all the grades i had for that for that semester for that quarter would be closed so i did well so i didn't have to worry about school even though school was the furthest thing from my mind um i remember sitting at the hospital when there was just a bit of quiet and no doctors came in it was just my mom, my dad and I, and they were just you know, sitting on their phones. And I was just looking out the window and my mom asked me, she said, are you okay? And I said, I don't know because I didn't, like I said, to not know, am I gonna die? Is what I, am, do I have cancer? So that just to this day, I'm still working through it, and I just want to let you know um, I'm still working through this grief. But um, I just want to take my time through this because it's not an easy thing to talk about. So I'll continue. Eventually, on Friday, I was discharged. Friday night, Saturday. My mom made me my favorite foods, my favorite dessert. I was just in my room. I actually watched a movie. I was watching. I was fine, actually. I was fine. I, I was. I was in shock, and I. But I felt fine, and I was watching a movie with my dad. And I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I just went upstairs and started crying. And my mom was like, "Was the movie sad?" And I. I was like, no, I just can't, what if I'm dying? What am I going to die? And my mom was just praying for me and saying, you know, Deanna, God is gonna keep you. We're just gonna put our trust in him. And my mom, she would tell, she told me about, you know, I knew this, but how I was, I was born prematurely, two months premature. I weighed two pound one ounce. Uh, the doctors told her everything, that I was gonna die, that I was gonna have, this ab genetic abnormality that I, you know, wouldn't have a normal life. Everything that I should, that she can, she should consider terminating the pregnancy. And if she had listened to them, I wouldn't be here. And my mom told me that to encourage me, and I understood. But I'm just like, I understand. I just overwhelming. Like I understand that, but now here I am at 16 going through this so on that Sunday I went to church because obviously my mom updated my pastor and you know my youth pastor and my pastor called my mom and my dad and myself up to the altar to pray and at first I was fine and as I was walking to the altar and then I just broke down because I'm only 16 you know I'm not uh, I was 16. Um, I had my whole life ahead of me. Um, I didn't know. I said, God, I just, I, I just, you know, I, I didn't know what was happening. So um, I prayed and all the church mothers and women came, and, you know, to pray for me. I just remember after they all came and they just spoke life into me saying, you know, you're here for a reason. God is going to keep you here for a reason. So to put my faith in him and I did. And I trusted God. Psalm I read Psalms 23 so much. 
it was on my heart, specifically Psalm 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, but for thou art with me, thy rod and staff comfort me. I replayed that verse in my mind. And it's one thing, you know, that's a, that's a verse that most people know, but it's a different thing to when you have to truly live that. And that's what I was doing. I was lit, like, I was in the valley of the shadow of death. Who knows whether I was gonna live or if I was gonna die. I, I didn't, and my parents, you know, oftentimes my parents can always say, you know, that's not gonna happen. This is not gonna happen, but they didn't have an answer for what I was going through. So I had to put my trust even more in God. And I pleaded with him. So I went to school that Monday to try and get some normalcy back. And obviously my mom, she updated my, you know, guidance counselor, the principal who updated my teachers. And we actually started learning the cancer cell biology unit. So I was able to skip that. Um, my, all my teachers were very supportive and understanding. So this wasn't, you know, this wasn't an issue. I was able to, you know, not, I didn't, I was just in class just to be in class. I didn't really have to give my all because I was obviously dealing with something else. And I remember just think, I remember crying. I had to, I went, I left one of my classes and went to the nurse's office and the nurse was really sweet. Um, she is the same nurse. Jackie has a lot of clothes. She makes um, Jackie look really fresh in all her little clothes. Um, but she was so sweet and kind. And I just remember crying so much. My mom had to come pick me up. And um, my prayer at the time was, God, if it is cancer, let it be treated with radiation and surgery. Please don't let me get chemo, God. Please don't let me get chemo. Because my biggest concern was, out of you know, a lot of things, was I don't want to lose my hair. And that's all I kept thinking. I cannot lose my hair. I don't want, and I'm just thinking, I cannot be bald, God. I don't, and plus, I don't want to have to get a port or pick line. I don't want to have to... I don't want keep radi if it is let it be radiation and um, surgery please so we finally got the biopsy results I'd say about a week maybe a week or two later and my oncologist said it is alveolar soft part sarcoma and it is not can it is it is cancerous it is it is it's cancer but it is not chemo sensitive so chemo would not work the best course of treatment would be radiation and surgery so i was happy i was so happy i said i said so it's not chemo i remember saying that to her i was like so it's not so it's not no chemo i don't need chemo she's like no well she didn't say it like that she said well no but it is still and I said, all right, let's go celebrate. Because I was so happy I didn't need chemo. So that's exactly what we did. We went to TGI Fridays and we celebrated. And my parents were looking at each other like, is Deanna okay? I wasn't. I was in shock. I'm realizing that now. The realization that I had cancer didn't set in until maybe a few months ago. I know it's a long time, but it, it's now setting in. And I was, like I said, I was really happy. So I had my surgery, in, I think March 16th, 2016. So this year will make it five years since I've had that surgery. The prep was really awful for the surgery. I went in a day before and obviously you have to do this colon cleanse and they make you drink a gallon of this really, really salty water and the colon cleanse. And for most children, they cannot finish it. So they give like a feeding tube and they pump the, they have to pump the 
the, um, the, the cleanse through you. And I didn't want that. So, you know, to make it easier, the nurses mixed it with this like crystal light or iced tea mix, but still, you know, it's very salty and it's, it, it's not, it's, it does not taste good at all. So they were pouring it one cup at a time. So, you know, first four cups, I said, you know what, I can do this. And I remember telling the nurse who, who was asking me, sweetie, are you okay? I think I was on cup 10 and it was about like maybe seven or six ounce cups or and she was like honey are you okay i said i can do all things through christ who strengthens me she's like that's the spirit honey and i was drinking and i kept drinking and I, you know i'm now i'm getting nauseous because i'm drinking too much i'm going to the bathroom i'm feeling nauseous it's just now i'm on cup maybe there's so many cups i don't know how many there was a lot Maybe this was is a little bit over a gallon. It was a lot. And I just remember saying, I cannot do this anymore. This is awful. I, I just can't. I keep I kept throwing it up. I kept I was just getting sick. And the nurse came back to me. She said, What happened to you could do all things through Christ who strengthens you? Where was that? Where is that energy? We need that. Come on, sweetie. And she was really encouraging. And so, you know, I I finally drank it all and you just knocked me out and basically you're at that time you're pooping liquid by then so you're completely clear and prior to that the other reason why the prep was awful was because I have very small veins and they were starting an IV I got stuck about six times there was two nurses and they were trying to find a good vein I got stuck here 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 just to come back to here i was crying in pain my mom was really upset and it ended up being a completely out of the two nurses another nurse had to come in and she was able to find the vein right back in here where they started so that's another reason why the prep was off so day of the surgery my parents prayed for me you have all the nurses, the doctors, anesthesiologists, um, and I had the surgery. I think the surgery lasted a little over six hours. It was pretty long, and recovery from that surgery was hard. Um, I'm still kind of recovering from the surgery today. I have the, the doctor, the surgeon said I'd have potentially have nerve damage because the tumor was the size of a grapefruit and it's in was embedded in my psoas muscle which is pretty deep in you and it's pretty deep and what happened was to get to resect the tumor they had to cut a few nerves and I have a bit of peripheral nerve damage so my whole for when I first had my surgery from my knee to my all the way to my upper thigh to my inner thigh I could not feel anything and about now I can feel up to mid thigh up to my mid thigh is okay but then after that I, I cannot feel anything it feels completely I can feel but the touch it the sense of touch is pretty distorted so it says it will, it will take a long time for me to get complete feeling back in my leg also I have um, scar neuromas which are bundled up nerves that are very agitated and it caused by like nerve damage and when they cut through they form scars with these bundled up like agitated nerves so anytime I use my core it hurts it hurts a lot so I'm still dealing with the aftermath to this day but surgery I mean recovery from that surgery was hard I could not move I couldn't I never thought I'd be able to walk again just the, the faintest little touch, it hurt so much. Laughing hurt, crying hurt, throwing up, forget it. I remember when I, I was discharged from the hospital a week later and I guess I wasn't feeling well and I threw up. I thought the seams of my stomach were going to come undone. I have never experienced pain like that before it was awful it's like someone just took a sledgehammer and ripped 
or a hacksaw and rip through my stomach. Um, so that, that was that, well, that was, and I had to go to physical therapy about a few weeks later, I started physical therapy and that was, and that was pretty helpful because like I said, I never thought I'd be able to walk again. I obviously now I can, but it was really painful. Um, because of that now we're in April. I still wasn't feeling well. I couldn't go back to school. Um, I couldn't go to my junior prom either, but luckily my friend was able to come over and he made dinner and we had, we watched movies, played Just Dance, uh, I played Just Dance. I couldn't really dance, I couldn't really move, but I did, I did my best. And it was really fun and that was my prom. Um, I started radiation in the May Yep, I started radiation in May. Yep, it was actually the Monday after um, Mother's Day. That Mother's Day or that, you know, I think it was the Friday or the Saturday. My grandma, my aunts, and my, a lot of family members came over and we had a really cool Mother's Day, you know, celebration, so much food. I'm Jamaican, so everything, jerk chicken, oxtail, everything. And I love, if you know me, you know I love food. So I was having time. My grandma, you know, my grandma actually had lung cancer. So, um, you know, we would talk a lot about, you know, what it, what it's like having cancer. And I was very close to my grandma. She's so sweet and funny. And I thing about my grandma is really funny. And yeah, she was the only other person I knew that, um, uh, had cancer so we would talk a, talk a lot about it but you know then that Monday I had my first um, my first therapy and it doesn't hurt it's like I said that was I guess the upside there are still side effects as I'm going to explain it's basically this this big machine that rotates and makes a lot of noise and or it doesn't make a lot of noise it does make noise and um obviously gamma rays come and kill the cancer cells that's the point and the radiation technicians were super sweet they're so kind to this day i still talk to some and they're really kind and they let me have my own music playlist so i can listen to music while getting radiation and i had my own radiation therapy and i brought jackie jackie was there at every single radiation they got to know jackie i think they liked jackie more than me but who knows um uh the day that day at my first after my first radiation therapy session i came home i felt fatigued and i didn't have an appetite i didn't have an appetite for the in from may to june of my entire uh the, uh, radiation. I maybe ate 10 things all together and when I did eat it wasn't because I was hungry but it was because I felt like I felt like eating. I didn't have an appetite. Um, so yeah that was that. And June finish. I That's all. Before I finished radiation I started passing out when I was during I, what we thought at the time were syncopal episodes there was one time where i think two three weeks into my treatment i was laying on i was on the rate i was on the table and i was getting i was getting ready to finish my therapy and so the technicians come out and i don't know how but my dad he came back to, i don't know if they went to go get my dad there's something that they normally don't do but i couldn't wake up i i was almost felt like I was blacking out and the technicians they tried to wake me up nothing I blacked out and I could kind of hear my surroundings but not really everything just seemed weird and distorted they drew blood they, they checked my pulse you know and it turned out I was I passed out during the session and that's what happened a lot after radiation I would be at home and I would just fall to the floor I'd be in my bed fall and I would just pass out uh, occasionally frequently I'd throw up um, and uh, yeah I didn't have an appetite 
and my white blood count was very and my platelet levels were very 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 low i just just remembered that um so i finished radiation in june and at the time i also was still finishing an assignment up for school because my teachers were really nice they said one assignment is going to be your semester grade just focus on the one and i had a paper to write on the sun also rises for english and uh, i'm throwing up i'm passing out i'm crying it's really hard i'm crying occasionally because i'm getting frustrated at dealing with this and i'm just besides my beside myself i i you know i'm like how do you expect me to get work done even though i know teachers are being really kind they didn't have to do this but they are because they they see i'm going through something so my mom encouraged me she said deanna just write the paper i said no way i'm just gonna take it incomplete i i can't do this anymore I, I, i'm tired as is mom so my mom suggested why don't you just go upstairs to the office and just just type it just type what you can and i did and it took me two days to write that paper i ended up getting a 96 and it's used as like a model paper now so that's pretty cool um uh so now we're going on july okay so now it's july i'm starting to feel a lot better no radiation i'm writing i'm taking college essay the college essay writing class and i wanted to try and write about my experience but it was really hard so i decided um to write about something else august i'm getting stronger i'm doing private dance lessons to get back into the swing of things and i'm getting stronger i'm really happy you know like i wasn't you know I, where i thought i couldn't walk now i'm going back and doing dance i'm taking you know you know advanced ballet like i'm really doing well so so I'm from september to october i'm getting at this time i'm getting a scan every i think every month and in about october like about october uh i the scan showed i had these polyps in my in my lung these little nodules and the doctor said oh you have walking pneumonia so we're like oh okay and prior to that i had a biopsy in about i think maybe that may or april sometime that summer i had a biopsy of my liver because they said they found something we're like oh crud not again so they they, they couldn't do the biopsy because they couldn't get enough tissue tissue sample so there's like it's it's nothing sort of like okay whatever so i have this walk i have walking pneumonia that they gave me my doc my oncologist prescribed some antibiotics so back now we're in november and i got another routine scan still show the nodules so my doctor with my oncologist said you know i think we should biopsy just like a, a few of the nodules just or one of the the biggest nodules is it's probably nothing but we just want to make sure and at this point i'm like yeah you really did a biopsy and it was nothing so if you want to take some tissue we'll go right on ahead like it wasn't wasn't bothering me it was like whatever it's routine at this point well my grandma's getting worse like i said she had lung cancer and she's starting to get you know more sick so she was back and forth in the hospital a lot and um around late November my grandma was you know definitely getting worse so you know my family you know we're considering like what are her options and she doesn't want to have to get a chest tube to drain and I understand like to drain the liquid or the fluid from her lung and I get it because after my lung biopsy it hurts so much they give you a um What's it called? A uh, chest tube, like I said, chest tube, and it dra and it drains all the liquid from or the fluid from your lung. Make sure nothing, there's no buildup, and it hurt. I still have the scars from to this day. It it was very painful. I couldn't sleep. I was at the hospital for about three days, and it was just really, it was just really painful. So, actually, after 
I was discharged from the hospital. I went immediately to the hospital to see my grandma because what the doctors called my mom and said, you know, you need to come and check on her because, you know, it's things are look like they're winding, they're winding down. So my mom and I, we're, we're panicking, we're crying. So we go there, my grandma's th to the hospital. My grandma's there just watching Jeopardy, like, hi. I'm like, hey, grandma, nice to see you. And, you know, um, we're just, you know, there spending time with my grandma, my family members from everyone from Georgia, they came down and, um, you know, they're, you know, everyone's there because we realize like, oh, like it's, it's closing in and to the point my grandma, you know, she was, she's, she was dying at that point. So, um, I'll say in about December, um, you know, we're realizing that she's dying and, you know, it's getting hard for her to speak, it's getting hard for her to really eat and do much of anything. And about December, I got, um, the, we were on the way to the, my mom and I were on our way to the hospital to, to talk about the biopsy results. And I wasn't worried, but I was worried about my mom because my grandma called my mom while she was driving and said, you know, she just, my grandma said to my mom, you know, I just want to let you know that I love you and I'm always thinking of you and just want to see how you're doing. And my mom started crying because she knew it would be one of the last times my grandma would ever talk to her. And it was the last time my grandma, I believe that was the last time my grandma and my mom ever spoke to each other. And my mom's crying, so I'm just trying to pray for her in the car while we're going up. And we're just going to the hospital again like we always do. And we get to the hospital and I see my mom, she's on her phone looking at headstones. And I'm like, mom, grandma's gonna make it. By this time we're just praying, God let her just make it through Christmas because Christmas was my grandma's favorite holiday. So, you know, we're just, I was praying for my mom and I was feeling really, really encouraged because I'm like, I know God is gonna see a way for grandma to make it for at least, through at least Christmas or to Christmas. And uh, we we're just really, you know, I, my mom was really sad and uh, I was just trying to be encouraged, you know, encourage her. And then the doctors came in and we're just talking. The doctor's like, hi, how are you? It wasn't my tip, normal oncologist. It was another oncologist and an APRN and they both came in. And they were just talking like, yeah, we just want to discuss the biopsy results. We're like, yeah, okay. And they say, well, we just want to let you know that the cancer has returned and it has metastasized to your lung. I, I said, what? I started crying. Now, I believe when I had the sarcoma, that was about, I want to say, um, second or third stage? I'll clarify. This was fourth, now this is fourth stage cancer and the test size my whole lung. Those little nodules that they saw, that they thought was walking pneumonia, was my sarcoma that metastasized. Now they did, after my radiation therapy, they did say the cancer may come back, but it will not come back. Maybe in about five years or more, or maybe not. So we're like, yeah, if I have to worry about this, I'll worry about it five years down the line. For right now, I'm in the clear. I'm going to go to college. It's going to be great. I'm going to start med school. Everything's going to work out. I just got diagnosed in March. Now they're telling me in December. It hasn't been a year. It's been months. I cried. I cried. I have to leave. There's a social worker there at, you know, at Yale. It's very sweet. She came and talked to me. And um, I cried so much. I said, why? You know, I don't understand. It's part of my the healing now is 
you know, I, you know, you, you don't question God, but you can ask God questions and try to understand. I already had this. That was the test. When I had the sarcoma the first time, that was the big thing, the test. Now I have it again and it metastasized. What? Why? Like, why? And it not the, the cancer itself not being chemo sensitive. I already had radiation. There was no, even if they wanted to remove all the nodules, they can't because there are so many. So, and then a few days later, my grandma died. And um, I re I, it's not something I always talk to my mom about my grandma because it hurts her. But losing my grandma around finding out I had cancer again, I'm not even over it to this day. And it's, it's probably not something I'm never going to truly get over. over. But um, it was so hard. I couldn't even, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was upset with God, but I was, I was more, I'm confused than anything. And to some extent, I still am, but I trust, but I, I'm trusting God a lot more. Um, so let's, let's go on. Now we're in about, uh, January. I went to a hospital, another hospital and going over treatment options, considering there's not a lot for sarcomas. There's not a lot for my sarcoma, or really any, there's pretty rare. I was actually the first person at Smilo to have alveolar soft part. So I don't mean to flex, but you know, I always thought they would put my picture up or something and they didn't, but okay. Um, so I went to the hospital, another hospital to discuss treatment options and there were just a few like maybe like two clinical trials haven't really you know thoroughly been tested they didn't really have a lot of it they didn't have answers so you know my parents are asking questions I'm there just in shock so after my parents are done asking their questions uh, I asked one of their two doctors, I asked one of them, I said, well, what, what will happen since there's not a lot you can do, what, what's, what's going to happen if the, the cancer keeps spreading? And they were like, well, it is slow growing, but it is definitely growing. So as the cancer grows, it'll consume your organs. It'll spread to your brain. They said it will spread to my ovaries. I won't be able to have children. <laughs> um, and I always wanted a family. to be a mom I said I could die <laughs> and I just left I started crying I said mom I really want to be a mom I want to be a doctor I want to why is this happening so <laughs> I am um, after we went to get dinner, um, took my mind off of it, but um, still. So eventually, I got prescribed a med and oral chemo, and um, eventually, it was causing so many side effects. We ended up using like alternative care and holistic care to to also help fight cancer and minimize the side effects of 
the oral chemo that I that I was taking and eventually stopped the oral chemo transition to more of holistic approach because the oral chemo was it was wreaking havoc on my system and um yeah but um now we're in uh February sorry um just for a moment um yeah it, it's just hard I'm sorry it's just a little hard um to talk about because I really thought I was going to die and I should have actually been dead because it's been five years and that's like the prognosis is it's five years and I shouldn't be dead and I'm not and I'm really grateful that I'm still alive <laughs> okay sorry okay um now it's February oh uh, god I need more tissues now it's a uh, February of 2017. Um, I um, I had college interviews, so I was still like, I by the grace of God, even with everything, I went on college interviews. And um, in March 2017, I went on a cruise, and it was really nice. To just get away and you know be on a cruise april 2017 able to go to my um prom and but that's when i started having bone pain it was a culmination of i started having when i t took the uh oral chemo and it was just a lingering side effects so bone pain was one of them and bone pain is the worst pain because there's no it's not like muscle it's not like cramps there's no massaging you can do. It's just to your core, it hurts. So I graduated in May. Oh, well, before I graduated. Oh, well, I did graduate in May in 2017. But then after, I had a liver biopsy. I forgot to mention this. But also back in January, um, I had a... They saw I had to meet with an interventional radiologists because they saw that the cancer metastasized to my liver and they wanted to resect one third of my liver. So it's lung, it's liver. I'm just, I, I don't know. At this point, I'm just like, oh God, I don't. You, you ever get to a point where you just don't even know what to pray for? anymore that's how I felt I was just like God I don't even know what to ask you I don't even know what I don't because I don't know what's happening um so yeah I had a I didn't have the liver resection because we actually had a liver biopsy at a different hospital completely different interventional radiologist and it showed that it was benign it's just a liver lesion that we still keep an eye out for today, but it was benign, which is a good thing they did that because they were going to go ahead and resect a third of my liver. Had it, my parents pushed and said, let's do some other testing because obviously they see it in my lung. They thought obviously it's going to be in my liver too. So yeah, it, thank God they, you know, they pushed in, not pushed, but they were true advocates for me and have been throughout this whole experience. Um, now, today, I am a college student. I major in molecular and cell biology at UConn, and I'm a senior. I'm going to make a whole, as I said in the beginning, I'm going to make a whole separate video on my experience of still fighting cancer to this day in college because it's its own um it's its own video really um but um part one is well this is part one really but 
The reason why I love Jackie very much is because I firmly believe God has put her in my life. She has been at every single test, every scan, every blood test, every time I've ever had, um, to, you know, I have it, they have, they call it scan anxiety, and I always have terrible anxiety getting CAT scan, MRI, whatever, sometimes even ultrasounds. She was there, every surgery, every procedure, and I really love her because Jackie represents a constant, a really cute constant at that. And to some extent, to a greater extent, that's who God is, a constant. Even though there were so many times I wanted to quit fighting. To this day, there are times I don't want to fight cancer anymore. God has protected me. He has delivered me. He has given me chance after chance. He has healed me. He has shown me that if he could heal me once, he'll do it again and he'll keep doing it because that's how great he is. Because God is that constant. He is amazing. And without him, I would have been, I would have surely been dead if not dying now I have my own I'm still you know sick even though I don't look sick sometimes I have to remind myself because I do have good days where I'm fine and then I have days where I'm throwing up I'm in pain from the neuromas or bone pain recurring bone pain um or I'm fatigued and I can't move or I'm passing out but even in those times God is still good and it has taught me that if I have to wait until I'm in a positive frame of mind to praise God, he'll never be praised. Even when I'm sick, I try and praise him. Or at least try and talk to him and let him know how I'm feeling. Because I don't want to, dis being distant from God is not something that I can afford to be. He's awesome because he blessed me with two loving, patient parents. They love me so much. They have sacrificed so much. They have put porn. They have been with me when they see me throwing up. When I say I can't do this, I want to quit. I can't do life anymore. It's not that I didn't want to be dead. It's just I, didn't, I don't want to be here anymore and deal with this. They pray with me. They listen to me. They nurture me, and now I'm 21, and they still do it, and they love me so much, and that's the kind of love that only God can give, and now I'm in college, and I'm really stressed because I'm still, I'm still fighting this, I'm still dealing with it, now I have all this trauma and pain associated with it that I'm not like completely healed from but God is working on me and he is so good that I am still alive to tell this story I don't know what it is that you're going through cancer just being stressed with school but God is faithful and if you cry out to him really cry out and really ask him he will help you. He will not, He will bring you out. He will bring you through. He will keep you. He won't always remove. And it taught me that some, God isn't always going to remove me from things that I don't want to be in. But he'll definitely see me through. And one thing I've learned from this experience. I've learned tenacity and strength. I have been knocked down for going on five years. I have been knocked down more times than I can count. I have been, for every positive achievement, there's always been a setback. As you can see, I was doing well that I had a recurrence. I'm fine bone pain. I'm doing well, and I, in another video, I'll talk about college. But I just, I thank God so much for every single person that he has sent in my life to help me along this way with my friends, my family, 
people who loves me. And if you do have cancer and you're watching this, I always wanted to make like a Zoom or like a group chat for like a cancer support group chat. And I know they have them out there, but I just wanted to make one, even if it's a big one. So if you wanna reach out to me on, I'll put the social media platforms right here. Please reach out to me or put it in the comments. If you, for I might do a separate one just for people going through issues, but if you are a young adult or anyone with cancer really, you know you know it's its own beast. So I just want um, to provide a forum that we can all talk and share our experiences because there's a lot more that has happened and a lot of other things that has happened that I didn't share, but I just I wanted to give this I thought about talking telling the story when I was all better but I wanted to give a real account of what it's been like still having it and I will hopefully graduate in the May in May so uh, I'm excited because I'm pretty tired doing cancer in college has is it's, it's been exhausting God is really good and um, I love you guys and I will be more consistent in posting and if you made it this far thank you so much for watching this um I really appreciate the support and if you're watching this and you the person who has helped me thank you I may have encountered people I don't even know but thank you I do love you and I thank you. So see you guys in the next video.